the get state function uh, from the paint function so this is a better approach actually so whatever controls you want to print, print on the screen if you make them available globally you can access them from any location so let's run this program so get state function will return true or false so see the the labels uh, in this current state label is that we have we are printing label values state of this label right yes checkbox group we have to create radio buttons we do not have a separate class in java awt package so to create a radio buttons we will use the same class checkbox class but uh, the fourth and fifth constructor will be using so those constructor take uh, an another extra argument a checkbox group class so whenever we want to create radio buttons first we create a, uh, an object of this class and inside the checkbox constructor we pass this object so whenever we do this the checkbox is turned into radio buttons and it behave like a radio button so okay so get selected checkbox so whenever this function is called on this group object so you can have that object whatever uh, the radio button actually so whatever radio button is selected so it is written as a checkbox uh, you can even set dynamically the set selected checkbox so you can pass the checkbox object and it will get selected on screen so let's see the example this will be the output of this program instead of checkbox it will generate radio button so uh, we are using the item listener okay so very simple we are creating a checkbox group and the constructor we are using the checkbox constructor but with the cb or cbg object checkbox group object so this uh, fourth argument is true or false for on or off of the radio button then we are attaching all four check boxes and then we are adding the item listener event so uh, at the end we are calling inside the item state change function we are calling the repaint function and it will call the update and update will call the paint function so cbg dot get selected check box dot get level so this is the way uh, you can put some logic here so this is the logic that we are uh, whatever radio button is selected we are getting the radio button and that on that radio button we are calling the get label function so this way uh, finally we have the whatever the label the radio button contains okay 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 choice so choice is a list actually so we have the add function so to add some item to the list we can call the add function and provide the label value text value actually then we have get selected item so whatever uh, item user has selected from the list it returns it so then we have a get selected index so okay so whenever we create a list uh, so it behaves like some uh, array you can uh, assume it is an uh, it is an array so whenever you call this function so the index of the label user has selected is written so if you have five items and user has selected the second item from the top so one is written so index start from 0 1 2 3 4 4 5 for five objects so okay so get item count it is a useful function so 
how many uh, elements are uh, items are there in the list so it returns it so if you have five elements so it will return five then we have a select function we can provide the index and that will automatically get selected so inside from inside the program we can call this function and to dynamically change the selection so even we can pass some string so that string should be already be present inside the list so get item will return the label and we pa we are passing the index or inside the list So we have two list here. So simple constructor we have choice. Normal constructor we are using. Then uh, we are adding four elements, four four layer items inside the list. In the first list, OS list, operating system list. Uh, and this is the text. Then the second list we have browser. So again, we are adding three items. Then we are adding this two list inside the applet, and we are again using the item listener interface. So we are calling the add item listener. Okay. So if we do not do this, if we implement that interface, we provide the definition, but we do not attach the list or whatever control we are using uh, with the item listener, nothing will happen. So the function will not get called actually. So this is the way to implement event programming. So okay, so we are again implementing the item state change event. So inside it, we are calling the repaint function, and again update and update will be called, and update will call the paint function. So OS operating system list dot get selected item. So it will return the label uh, text. Then we uh, we are printing the text on screen. Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. So this is okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have list now. So like choice, we create list also. So the diff uh, there is a minus difference that uh, of logic that inside the choice you can only select one item at a time but inside the list user can select multiple items so the list uh, uh, there are three constructors for the list so uh, the first constructor creates a normal list and after uh, creating you will add some items so then the second constructor takes the number of rows integer uh, parameters so how many rows you, you want to show on the screen so say you have 100 elements in the list but only three elements should be shown at a time on the screen so three should be passed inside the parameter so the third constructor takes a multi select uh, true or false value boolean type so whenever this function is called uh, uh, we are making the list multi selectable or not so if it is true so user can select multiple items at a time so this add function, add function, uh, there are two versions of the add function. The first function uh, simply takes a string and adds it. The second uh, uh, function takes an index also, so at which location you want to add the element. Okay, so if you want to add the element, at the end we can provide minus one. Four. And the default it will automatically add at the end of the list. Then we have get selected item. So, okay, so get selected item. So, which item is selected on the list? And get selected index. So, which index like 0 or 1 or 3, which index uh, the currently selected item has? Then we have the get selected item. Uh, it returns the string. But if more than one item is selected, or if there is no selection at all, so it will return null, right? Because multiple items are selected, so how it will return a, uh, this function will return a single value. So if you have a multi-select list, do not use this function. Sure. 
And similarly, do not use this function get selected index if you if you are allowing the user to select multiple items. So this is not a good approach. Then we have this get selected index will return minus one if more than one item is selected or if no item is select has been selected at all. So if we have multiple uh, multiple selectable list. So we should use this function, get selected items and get selected index. So this is the correct approach. So it will return an array instead of a single label. So you can store it inside the some string, string array. Similarly, you can store, uh, use an inter integer array to put all the in selected indexes. Then we have a get item count. This, this function is useful. So how many numbers elements are there inside the list? Then we have sel select, so dynamically select the value. Then we have get item, so get the value of that particular index. Uh, list demo. Okay, so this is our output actually. Okay, so one thing. Okay. <laughs> See, uh, whenever user clicks on list single click or double click. It may be a single click or it may be a double click. So mm -hmm. if the user performs a double click, action listener is called. Okay. So if user performs a single click, item listener is called. I so see. if you want to generate some event on single click, use the item listener. If you want to use the double click, use the action listener. So I think okay. most of the time you will be using the item listener. So Okay, so we are getting two lists. The same approach we are using, no, no difference from the choice. Then we have, we are adding the add action listener to attach the double click and then we are using the add item listener to attach the single click. So, action perform function will be called whenever user perform the double click. So this action listener so action listener, uh, due to this, it will call the action performed event. So double click, uh, we are printing just the double click on the command prompt console. Then we have, okay, so item state change. So item listener, we have implemented this also. So this function will call the item state change when whenever single click is determined. Okay, so here what what we logic we have is that open system dot get selected indexes. So what items user has selected? So we are calling this function and we store all the elements inside an array. Then similarly we are doing this for other other list also. So let's run this. Okay. Single click. See the uh, console of the checklist. Mm -hmm. So single click is get, getting printed. Okay, so double click. I perform the double click and double click contains single clicks also. <laughs> Two single clicks. So yes. So it is so it is getting the single click is getting printed two times. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this was the list control, one more control we will discuss and after that